worst Karen I've ever seen caused a blow up for the ages because I wouldn't give her son a black belt on his first day of karate. Background. I teach Kenpo karate as a second degree black belt. I also have an assistant, Kara, a first degree black belt in her own right. I don't own the gym. My instructor does. But since he's gotten older me and Kara handle the younger classes while he handles the business side of things plus adult class. We have three classes. Kids class age 5 to 10. Intermediate class age 11 to 15. Adult class age 16 and up. Main story. So kids class has just ended when a woman walks in with her son. She says her 13-year-old son wants to take karate lessons. So I shake hands with her and have her sit down with my instructor to fill out the waivers and get him his GI measurements. Other students file in for the intermediate class and me and Kara get down to business. I take the bulk of the class, around 15 kids, while Kara goes with the new student one-on-one -on -one to teach him basic strikes and stances. Not five minutes later I hear Kara upset, telling new boy to do 10 push-ups. Why? He called Kara, who's essentially a volunteer, a effing bee. Karen, the mother, stands up and says her son can't do push-ups, as she doesn't want her son to be sore. Kara lets him do the push-ups on his knees, but not five minutes later she makes him do 20 more, since he's now called her a slut. For reference, Kara is in her early 20s, and the boy is 13, not to mention there's other parents and kids here as well. It's wholly inappropriate, so I walk over and ask Kara to switch with me. As she does, she gives me the bug eyes and mouths what the f. So I walk over and ask the boy why he insulted my assistant Kara. He said he doesn't like girls. When I asked him what he meant, he said he only listens to his dad or other boys. He won't listen to me at all. He needs some discipline. The mother confirms to me, chuckling, as if raising a monster is something to laugh about. When do I get a black belt like you have? The boy asks me. Mind you, he's been punching the air the entire time. This boy is aggressively hyper. Well, it takes quite a while. I've been training since I was 5, and earned my black belt at 21, so it took me a while. I say, nah, I don't want to wait that long. I want mine now, he says, his chubby face now red and sweaty from the shadow boxing. The mother motions me over and whispers in my ear, do you think you could give him one, just to make him happy? No sorry he has to earn one, we aren't a belt factory. Well he never gets told no. I'm sorry, but that's not how we do things here. I have money, I can pay you extra. No, sorry, we only give belts when they're earned. After several minutes of arguing and conversation that leads nowhere, Karen snaps at me. I paid you give my son a black belt. She stands up and points a finger in my face. It was so sudden that I reflexively took a step back. Hey, chill out lady. Some of the other parents chime in. Before I can reply to Karen, I hear a loud commotion behind me. I hear more parents and students shouting. I turn and see new boy smacking and hitting a girl in the class. Kara is shouting hey, stop. However, this girl that new boy is hitting is a purple belt and a little badass of her own. She loads a front kick and hits brat boy center mass right in his flappy stomach. He shouts and doubles over, crying tears of pain. I was so freaking proud of her. Hey, that little bee hurt my son. Karen runs past me onto the mat and gets in the face of the 14-year-old girl her son just attacked. This girl is already scared and starts to cry but Karen ups the ante and shoves this girl in the chest with her hand. Kara gets between them and is red-faced and raged. I immediately rush over and try to defuse the situation but neither of them are having it. Parents stand up and start shouting, Keep your hands off my daughter. The girl's father, who was with the other parents, yells at Karen. He starts approaching aggressively but backs off when he realizes me and Kara, both black belts, are by her. Now, you should know something about Kara. She's under 5 feet, less than 110 pounds soaking wet, but she can still kick my ass up and down the mat on any given day. She's fast, accurate, and insanely flexible. She can control her body and perform techniques that I just simply can't. So Kara and Karen get into a shouting match with each other. I tell Karen to leave with your kid and don't come back. Don't you ever lay a hand on any of my students. Do you understand? I raised my voice and was genuinely pee off. F you. My son needs a black belt and you won't give him one. She screams at me. Your son is crazy. He attacked our students. Kara interjects. But this set Karen off as she reaches and tries to be slap Kara in the face. Ha ha ha. Big mistake. Having had enough, Kara parries the smack and fires an absolutely vicious leg kick right into the meat of Karen's inner thigh with nothing held back. The slap sound of Kara's shin bone decimating Karen's thigh echoed off the ceiling like a slab of meat getting thrown on the floor. It was glorious. Karen gasped as she fell onto the mat in a heap. Oh, oh my god. 
She held her leg as Brat Boy got up and rushed at Kara. I got in front of her and grabbed the boy's wildly swinging arms. He hit me a few times but I refused to hit children whatsoever. I let him tire himself out. One of the parents called the police. After interviewing everyone involved, they determined that Kara and myself acted in self-defense. Neither of us wanted to pursue assault charges against Karen, but the parents of the girl Karen shoved rightly felt differently about it, so Karen was hauled away in handcuffs. Karen said she'd sue me and Kara in civil court, but since we have legal waivers, here's hoping nothing comes of that. As for the boy, I honestly feel bad. His childhood has been robbed by piss poor parenting, and I wish we could have had more time to straighten him out. I have particular dislike for his views of women, and feel like I really could have helped turn him around. Maybe, maybe not. So yeah, that was my experience tonight. Hope you all enjoy reading it more than I did going through it. From the comments, I always need a metaphorical cigarette when a Karen finally gets a deserved comeuppance. But after that story, I may need a whole carton. Sorry you had to deal with that, OP. But the second Karen reached back, she deserved far more of a response than Kara gave her, really, but at least she got one. And that the cops actually hauled her off. Cherry in the FU Sunday. OP, hey it's all good man. I'm just glad none of my students were seriously hurt. I care about them like family. Story 2. Father covers for his new wife, is surprised when I cut him out of my life. Starting this out by saying what's done is done. This has been a long time coming and it is well deserved. Please don't suggest I try to reconcile with my parent. Recently I have come to learn that my stepmother has only been around 8 years and whom I don't care for stole $768 from me 32 man. When I spoke to my father all he could do was complain about how many problems this is causing him, the stress on his heart and how it's damaging his relationship. He didn't apologize for what she did, he just made the phone call about himself. For a phone call that lasted an hour and a half, I probably spoke for 15 minutes or less. I told him we could talk about it when I get there and figure something out. He then suggested flat out that I can help him work to make back the money. Yes sure let me perform physical labor to earn the money your wife stole from me and pocket you another $900. That sounds great. I was coming in from out of state for a different reason and already planning on staying at the house. This is my childhood home with my room still furnished how I left it like my clothes are still in the dresser for when I visit. Plane tickets purchased and I send him the confirmation date. The next day he then texts me that I'm no longer welcome at the house. That it's time I grow up and seek healthcare somewhere else and that he just needed to know where to send the money. This throws all of my appointments into the void. And I had to cancel and rebuy plane tickets because of it and now I am staying with other family. I know he did it to protect my stepmother from the confrontation of facing me in person. She crumbles to dust if people raise their voices around her or curse too much, even casually. For reference this woman is in such need of therapy that I cleaned and rearranged the kitchen one morning and T started crying and claimed I was kicking her out of the house by making it not hers. All I did was do dishes and organize and clean the spice cabinet and pantry. He keeps saying that it's for his health, that I'm not there and that it's too much stress. I have my own money and transportation and provide my own food. The duration of the trip was two weeks. I block him and my stepmother on everything. I ask my family to no longer speak to my dad about me. This is all after a lifetime of abuse and narcissistic BS from my father. Now I hear through the grapevine that he's shocked, just couldn't believe I'd do this to him. My sibling already no longer speaks to him because of similar things and him telling my brother to grow up and quit being a PSSY after my sibling set a boundary with him. I had warned him before that if he kept up in his ways casually racist homophobic blatantly inflammatory he'd have no one to take care of him when he's older and he didn't listen. If that wasn't enough, my late mom's last words to him were don't let the family fall apart. Way to go dad. Thanks for listening. Edit. Forgot to add amongst all this the entitled part. Father said that it's only $768 and that I shouldn't care if it was him or her that took it. That he's my father. From the comments. Sorry man. But sounds like you're better off without them in your life. OP, I appreciate that. Spoke to a therapist because this was heavy for me and they said that it sounded like the correct choice as well.